Good morning, Christ Church. Welcome to Food for the Journey. I'm joined here by Deacon Becky, and my name is Father Justin here at Christ Church, and we are on the verge of beginning the season of Advent, which is the season of hope, of expectation, as we await the coming of our Messiah, which we'll celebrate again on Christmas uh, this year. And also, the Advent also positions us to hopefully, ex hopefully, that's just not the right word, but we stand in expectation also for the coming of Jesus back as well. So there's kind of this twofold expectation in Advent. So the readings are kind of geared that way. And this morning we're going to talk about uh, Jeremiah, uh, which is the lesson for this coming Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent. In Jeremiah, we're in chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. And folks, let me just tell you right off the bat, Becky and I were just talking about this. This passage that we're going to read on Sunday is set within some really not good stuff for the Israelites. What we have found ourselves in is Jeremiah's prophesying to the Babylonian exile. That's what's about to happen. Because Old Testament when you don't live into the covenant that you made with God, when the kings and the rulers and the people don't own and live into their end of that covenantal relationship or that agreement, bad things happen. And that's exactly where we find ourselves. Bad things are happening to the Israelites and the Babylonians are going to come in, destroy the temple, take these people away to Babylon, far away from their homeland. Some will stay, but most will go. And amidst all of that exile, there's a lot of people who are going to lose their lives in this, in this confrontation. That's not going to go well uh, for the Israelites. For the Israelites. There's a lot, I think, that we can look at in our day and time right now when we see all the catastrophes, all the disasters, and it's easy for us to look at all the bad stuff that's happened. Um, and think that there's nothing left, but then there is this word of hope. And I don't think it's by mistake that you used hopefully when you just said this, because mm -hmm. this is one speck of hope that is uh, spoken in this time. So even as bad as things are, especially for the um, Jewish people, for the Israelites, and they don't know that it's gonna get worse, still there is an offer of hope. And it's good to have this hope because it's hope, if you can kind of look at this juxtaposition, position, you have hope, but you also have a people around these verses that we're reading around 14 through 16 that are really on the verge of despair. And Jeremiah chapter 33 kind of reminds us as to what despair might be. Uh, and it seems like despair is when we don't see a future, when we don't see hope when we don't see promise we don't see something that's better than where we where we are and we can't figure out how to get out of this really bad situation which for the israelites this is bad I mean, they don't have their temple they don't have their promised land they're in a foreign land they've got a group of people who don't really like them that much um and they're kind of on the verge of despair but yet even in jeremiah here i will cause a righteous branch to spring up for david so right there, there's promise. And at the end, on verse 16, uh, God names, or Jeremiah, on behalf of God, names Israel again. The Lord is our righteousness. So, yes, there might be this kind of despair when we think about our time and place, and maybe in our own lives, we've, we've been in a position where we don't see, we don't see a, a hopeful future. But yet, it's in that kind of place that God seems to move. Well, God's always moving, but it seems that God moves in very powerful ways. It's just always, it's hard for us to kind of step back and look at the way God is moving in our lives. Because, just like the Israelites, as they're crying out to God. God's crying out about this too, by the way. That happens in Jeremiah, where God gets upset about what's happening but sometimes when we don't take a step back we we start to look for God to do what we want God to do not what God needs to do for us 
Yes, and one thing I um, also took note of is that Jeremiah, for all these words that he said about coming destruction and all the um, issues that the Israels are going to have to face up to, he was thrown in prison a few times, so it wasn't exactly the most um, um, comfortable position for Jeremiah to be in as well. And I wonder, you know, as he's getting these words, what must have been going through his mind? Yeah, I, you know, that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing. Because Jeremiah did have an interesting road, as many of the prophets do. Mm -hmm. uh, they find themselves, because if you're a prophet in the ancient times, you weren't always delivering the message that people in power wanted to hear. Um, for example, even in this passage, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. There's kind of a double meaning there. God's going to execute justice and righteousness. We participate in that justice and righteousness when we choose to. But justice and righteousness isn't always the language that rulers want to use or utilize. So there's this very interesting thing always happening with prophets. And they always find themselves in a bit of a pickle. Um, because they are prophesying a message usually to bring people back in the right relationship with God to point them or to alert. to alert them or to tell them you have messed up and now this will happen and that's really where we are in Jeremiah Israelites you have done this and just as God promised when you don't up uphold your end of the bargain this now happens mm -hmm. and that they I can imagine that's not always good for people to, um, they're not going to receive that well. No, no, no. So I hope you'll come join us on Sunday, first Sunday in Advent, as we kind of dive into this and a couple other readings. As we, and the last thing I want to leave you with, especially as we kind of talk about justice and righteousness, Advent's also a time where we make space for our imagination to kind of join with God's creative work and gotten in that, in that expectation, that hope which is really what's going to drive the Israelites why they live in exile, is they begin not to live in despair, but they begin to live in hope and their imagination. They start to imagine a world where they're back in their home and their promised land. And of course, the Persians will bring that reality to fruition for them. So, hope you'll come join us. This is a great reading from Jeremiah. Open your Bible, take a look. Let us know, either one of us, if you have any questions, you can email us or uh, contact the church office.